Go ahead and grab yourself a tomato cage and also grab some wood shims. Grab a scrap board, take the thick end. We're gonna get a nice clean hole and we're gonna do this to all of our shims. What we're gonna do is take a towel and just dip it in there, make sure it's all covered. Just wipe it on there. The sticky points that go into the ground, we don't need those. It's just gonna snap right off. Now we're gonna grab us some copper wire. We're gonna put that through the shim with the hole in it. Just use it like a twist tie. Go all the way around. Once you get the second layer done, we're gonna grab us a solar light from Dollar Tree. Take off that small part on the bottom, the stake, we don't need that, and let it float right in the middle. Now we're gonna work on that last circle. And when the night starts to fall, watch this, that thing is gonna light up. And you don't even have to turn it on or off. It works its magic automatically and recharges during the day. Headed down to local Dollar Tree, I'll grab some rope, some clear bottles, and some cool little lights. Let's take the hook off the top of the light. Next, we're gonna take the bulb off. Next, we need to take the actual light mechanism and pop it out. What we need to do is paint this cover. Now on the bottle, we have a cork here. We can go ahead and just remove that. Next, I grabbed off of Amazon a bottle cutter. Put the bottle on the rollers and you go ahead and start turning it. What you want to do is hear this noise. That means you're cutting right through the bottle, but it won't cut all the way through. I'm going to show you a little cut line on there. Stick the bottle in the boiling water for a good 30 seconds. Once you got it in there and it's heated up, immediately go ahead and put it in the icy cold water. It's going to separate along the score line and look at that. Perfect. Takes off the bottom and you've got a nice, flat, smooth line. Put the lights back through our painted cover and clip it back on. Take some E6000 glue and place it around the edge. Take some hot glue and put it in the areas I didn't put the E6000 on. That's going to hold the cover in place while the glue is drying. I'm going to stick the lights inside the bottle, set the cover on top, then we're going to take that rope, stick some hot glue on the neck of the bottle, let that hold, and then we're going to start wrapping it all the way around the neck. And then take this extra twine, we're going to put it through the hook. I made three of these and we put them up, and it made a perfect summer afternoon. This taper candle holder I found at a thrift store. I added silicone to each holder spot, and then added the top of a solar light to each one. I let it dry for 24 hours, and it's ready to go outside. Using a stencil or freehand, you can paint or use a Sharpie to draw on your numbers. Add some glass rocks or any decoration inside you like. Add some water as it will amplify the light reflection. Pull your solar light apart and you only need the top piece. Place that inside the lid of the mason jar and screw the lids back on. You'll need three different sized terracotta pots. This is so they'll stack easily. Start by painting your terracotta pots whatever color you like. Pull the solar light apart and cut the little stem off the solar light to make it flat. Add silicone to the base of the solar light and put it on the top of the terracotta pots for your light. Using some more paint or Sharpies, draw on your windows or any other decorations you'd like. Once it's dry, you're all set to go. You can put it outside and enjoy it. I picked up a couple of these dollar store solar lights and I'm going to take them apart. So I'm going to cover the light bulb on the bottom and then I'm going to cover the solar panel on top and then use a craft knife to cut around it so you get perfectly straight lines. So I'm going to untwist this screw and put that aside. I'm taking them outside and I am adding a couple coats of a matte black spray paint. Make sure they're fully dry to the touch and now we can assemble. So first we want to remove the painter's tape so that these solar lights work. On the clear plastic part, there are two little clips that help attach it to the top. And I'm just going to take some floral royer and wrap it around each one of those clips. Wrap it nice and tight so it hugs the plastic closely. And then I'm able to screw the black part back on top and the wire is still going to hang out either side. I picked this chain up at the craft store. It is actually in the jewelry section. I'm going to thread the chain through the screw and tighten it about halfway. So I'm just going to use my floral wire and wrap it around that hoop. I want to make sure it's centered. Now I can put this middle hoop, the smaller hoop, back inside the larger one. I can tighten this screw and it should hold together really well with tension. I made a couple of these dollar store solar light pendants to hang on my deck. This taper candle holder I found at a thrift store. I placed silicone in the base and added the top part of a solar light onto it. I let it dry completely and placed it on my side table as a lamp. This tea light holder I found was supposed to have a lampshade. I placed a solar light minus the stem into the tea light location and I placed an old glass shade over the top. I ran across this candle holder chandelier at the flea market. I first brought it home and I spray painted it with Rust-Oleum metallic spray paint. 
Afterwards, I put the tops of solar lights in each spot where the tea light candle holders went. I hung it up and I had a new solar chandelier. You're going to need some dollar store solar lights. So the first thing we're gonna do is flip the bowl upside down and we need to remove the label. Next, I'm gonna focus on the solar light. So we just take the stem off. We're not even gonna need that. You need to open up the solar light and pull out the tag so that the solar light works. Then you can place that back on and this part is ready to be used. This will be the base of our project. What I'll be using for this project for weight are these dollar store rocks. So I'm gonna be placing them inside. For the next step, I'm gonna place the solar light in top like this. I'll go ahead and add a few more rocks to this. So what I'm gonna do is add a little dab of hot glue on each corner like so. I'm gonna take that bowl and flip it upside down and place it right there on top so it's centered. So just to show you, if I remove this out, you can see here, I would be able to pull this off and replace this easily with another dollar store solar light if this burns out at some point. Here they are in my dish flower garden and I'm thrilled with how they turned out. To begin this project, choose your solar light set. Next, using half an inch by three-fourths inch board, measure and cut eight eight-inch sections. Using a rod nailer, I secured these together, creating a square, but if you don't have access to this tool, you can always use a screw. Next, decide how long you want your light to be. We chose to use a one by two by 30 inch board. After sanding, find the middle of the board and mark off five points we space stars five inches apart. Using a paddle bit, drill through the center of the board. After finding the center on the side piece and the length board, line them up and then secure. Once everything is square, measure your final four boards to make a hollow rectangle. Cut and secure these as you did the side squares. Finally, attach two eye hooks to either side to use for hanging. After my eye hooks were secure, I attached three feet of black chain link to each side of my chandelier. You can leave this raw wood and coat with a polyurethane to protect it from the outdoors, but I chose to use a satin black spray paint. Once my spray paint was dry, it was time to secure my solar lights. This took a little force, but warming up the plastic in the sun can make the tube more pliable. I chose to cut down my tubes, but this is of course personal preference. I have a pergola out back where I hung my new chandelier from two screw hooks. I absolutely love the new ambiance it creates, not only at nighttime, but it also adds a designer touch to my outdoor space. I had a very old and large flower pot, so I started with some Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color cement, and I spray painted the outside of the entire flower pot as well as the upper lip and a little bit into the inside edge of the flower pot. There was a little ledge on the outside and I decided to add a gingham ribbon. Now these flower pots are really large and it takes a lot of soil sometimes to fill these up. Use pine cones. This will allow for drainage and they will decompose over time. Use straw or hay inside the flower pot to fill it part way up. It allows for great drainage. You can use old paper, whether it's recycled paper, old phone books or magazines, add some rocks or some bricks to the bottom half of a flower pot. Another option is to grab some pool noodles. Cut the pool noodles into small sections. Place all of these sections into the flower pot and it takes a little bit of arranging to get them into the flower pot the way you want them to look. You could stop here or I'm gonna add a pizza pan to the top of the pool noodles. The water will be able to drain around the outside edge. I add some soil to the top of the pizza pan, and then it's time to plant my flowers. Once I get everything planted into the flower pot, it's ready to be displayed all summer long. Thus are great plants. They're so easy to grow and divide if you want more. Most of them are deer, rabbit, and disease resistant. I have a lot of hosta at my house, all different varieties for sun and shade. I think the biggest question everybody has about hosta is which variety should be planted in the sun and which varieties are for the shade. The answer is the lighter the foliage, the brighter the sun. So you would plant golden or chartreuse hosta in full sun. The variegated leaved variety would go in sun or shade and the blue-leafed variety are for full shade. The most popular variety that you see are the variegated, such as Minuteman or Liberty. These can be planted anywhere and will thrive. 
The soil for hostas should be slightly acidic and have good drainage. But with a little care, they will mature in four to eight years and some will grow into massive plants. The best time to divide a hosta is in the spring before the leaves unfurl, but you can really divide them in any season as long as it's not really hot outside. To begin, place your shovel at the base of the plant and dig down about five inches. You want to dig around the entire perimeter of the plant, then lift it out of the garden. Hosta have very shallow roots, so it's very easy to dig. To divide the hosta, you lay it on its side and then place a garden spade in the middle of the root ball. A garden spade is different than a regular shovel. A garden spade has a flat bottom. Now you want to press down firmly on the spade with your foot and split the hosta. You can continue to split the hosta as many times as you like. You just need to make sure that each new plant has roots attached. Now you need to plant your new little hosta plants. You want to dig a hole a little larger than the actual plant. Hold the leaves up and fill the hole with soil. You want to remove any leaves that have broken off and water well. Recut the ends of any leaves that you removed and arrange them in a vase just as you would with flowers. This display will last for weeks. I decided that I really didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on this project, so I used whatever things I had around the house already. And then to keep the soil from coming out of the sides, we used some landscape fabric and some of those pieces of wood to hold the fabric in place. And I used some old 4x4s left over from an old playset to make planter boxes. So we salvaged what we could from the old garden and pressure washed the bricks and the patio stones. And I reclaimed the sand and pebbles from the old garden to level out the walking space between the boxes. And then I added more of the reclaimed soil from the old garden, planted some seeds, planted some pretty flowers because you want your garden to look pretty. And of course you want to be able to eat out of your garden. So I added some herbs as well as some tomatoes and some peppers, cucumbers, and a few other things. Now I'm no master gardener, but I have learned a few things over the years. Eggshells, for instance, can add calcium back into your soil, which is particularly good for tomatoes. Just crunch up the shells and sow them into your soil. Another way to add additional nutrients back into your soil is ashes from wood-burning logs. Now this will also raise the pH of your soil, so you wouldn't want to put it around acid-loving plants like azaleas and blueberries and strawberries, but it's really great for tomatoes and a lot of the other plants in your garden, as well as the hardwood trees in your yard. It's been a few weeks and the garden is starting to really look beautiful.
I found this piece of dryer venting at the reuse store. I'm gonna start by slicing it down the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a section. With this end cut off, I wanna flatten it out. I wanna turn them into wings. I'm gonna make two different sizes. I'm gonna lightly brush on some blue paint to the ends, some sage green to the middles, and then some cream paint to the tips. I'm gonna do both sides of the spindle. I'm gonna add some sage green. I'm gonna cover the entire spindle now with this pearl glaze. I'm just gonna use some small nails and a hammer to hold all four wings in place. The final thing I need to do is attach a small head. I love how fun this giant dragonfly is. It adds such a colorful touch to the fence and was so easy to make. We'll start by giving this old fence a quick sanding and then brush the dust off and we'll be ready for stenciling. Got a dense foam roller, offload the roller so there won't be too much paint. And when you're stenciling, try to use a nice even pressure. And now you can remove the stencil, randomly place your next stencil and just continue. Okay, I've got the stem stencil placed. So now we're gonna use the leaf stencil. I pre-place my stencils to knock it right out. What do you think of this project? It turned out great, and it's an easy one for first-time stencilers. All you need is a stack of wood paint stirs. It's all laid out. I'm going to go ahead and paint them a beautiful yellow color. Now that my paint sticks are all ready, it's time to start putting them together to add some wood glue in between the joints. I love this new piece of beehive art. I can't wait to see what it looks like when the plants start growing. Okay, so first stage of this is for me to get this paint, this fence completely painted. I have got these melamine plastic plates I just picked up at the dollar store. I've also got a couple of these larger silver colored plates. That's isopropyl alcohol. I've just cleaned the plate with that. I'm going to take a little bit out of alcohol here. I'm just going to squirt it onto the plate. And then I've got these really lovely, I'm just going to drop a little bit on here. And I'm just going to move this around a bit to start with. Alcohol on there. There we go. Here we go. A little bit more of that. You can use a hairdryer or a heat gun. I'm just going to go around and around in circles and just see if we can get some nice kind of edges. Okay, now because this is alcohol ink, I'm actually going to seal it with this Kmar varnish. The second version that I'm going to do on these little plates is I'm actually going to use these stick and style stencils. This I've already coated with a second coat of paint. Okay, let's take this stencil off and see how it looks. Our third technique that we're going to create on these plates is going to be, we're going to go full Jackson Pollock. Next up, we're going to use this silver bullet, exactly the same. We can do that on one of our smaller plates. So let's see what it looks like now that I've hung them all up. I picked up three of these styrofoam balls when I was at the dollar store and I'm going to put one of these sticks in each of the balls and there we go it's as easy as that. So I want to go ahead and paint each of these balls and I'm going to cover this in glue first. I've got a whole bunch of different colors of glitter here that I just picked up at the dollar store. Just lightly smush it in there. So I'm going to take that glued side and just start rolling it. And I'm gonna cover this ball with these beautiful glass rocks. Give them a little spray with a, a clear top coat. These garden gazing balls were so easy to make with just a few supplies from the dollar store. They were quick and they add such a beautiful touch to the garden. I went to the store and grabbed some hula hoops along with black matte spray paint. I took the hoops out to my garden and decided to attach them to my house using small poultry staples. I then slipped a piece of pipe cleaner through the hole and attached the hoop, twisting the ends together. I used black electrical tape to join the hoops together. To attach the plant, I carefully moved each stem, bundling some together and following the curve of the hoop. I love the look of my new trellis and it was so easy to make. And as the plant grows, I can simply add additional hoops. Go ahead and grab yourself a tomato cage and also grab some wood shims. Grab a scrap board, take the thick end. We're gonna get a nice clean hole and we're gonna do this to all of our shims. What we're gonna do is take a towel and just dip it in there, make sure it's all covered. Just wipe it on there. The sticky points that go into the ground, we don't need those. It's just gonna snap right off. Now we're gonna grab us some copper wire. We're gonna put that through the shim with the hole in it. Just use it like a twist tie. Go all the way around. Once you get the second layer done, we're going to grab us a solar light from Dollar Tree. Take off that small part on the bottom, the stake. We don't need that. And let it float right in the middle. Now we're going to work on that last circle. And when the night starts to fall, watch this. That thing is going to light up. And you don't even have to turn it on or off. It works its magic automatically and recharges during the day.
I ran to my local Walmart and grabbed two matching pots, one bigger than the other. First thing I did was level an area in the front that would be in direct sunlight and put the bigger pot in first. Next, I grabbed an old bucket upside down into the bigger pot to make sure that it's centered. Next, I grabbed a flower pot base. I wanted to make sure that I turned it with the lip side down. We're going to take the smaller pot that we got and place it on the center of that pot. I want to grab some local rocks and place them around the edge. Next, I got out a new solar powered fountain that I bought for $10. It floats in the water because it's got a float on the bottom and it works great in direct sunlight. With this fountain comes some plastic spacers. What this does is make sure that the fountain stays in the center of the pot. Once you got it marked, you can go ahead and just trim it with a pair of scissors. Put some nice clear water inside. Go ahead and place the fountain inside. Once the direct sunlight hits it, voila, you've got a water fountain. The most amazing thing about this is it's solar powered. So you can place it anywhere in your yard that it gets direct sunlight. I headed down to a local Dollar Tree. I'll grab some rope, some clear bottles, and some cool little lights. Let's take the hook off the top of the light. Next, we're gonna take the bulb off. Next, we need to take the actual light mechanism and pop it out. What we need to do is paint this cover. Now on the bottle, we have a cork here. We can go ahead and just remove that. Next, I grabbed off of Amazon a bottle cutter. Put the bottle on the rollers and you go ahead and start turning it. What you want to do is hear this noise. That means you're cutting right through the bottle, but it won't cut all the way through. I'm going to show you a little cut line on there. Stick the bottle in the boiling water for a good 30 seconds. Once you got it in there and it's heated up, immediately go ahead and put it in the icy cold water. It's going to separate along the score line and look at that. Perfect. Takes off the bottom and you've got a nice flat smooth line. Put the lights back through our painted cover and clip it back on. Take some E6000 glue and place it around the edge. Take some hot glue and put it in the areas I didn't put the E6000 on. That's going to hold the cover in place while the glue is drying. I'm going to stick the lights inside the bottle, set the cover on top. Then we're going to take that rope, stick some hot glue on the neck of the bottle, let that hold, and then we're going to start wrapping it all the way around the neck. And then take this extra twine, we're going to put it through the hook. I made three of these and we put them up and it made a perfect summer afternoon. To begin this project, choose your solar light set. Next, using half an inch by three fourths inch board, measure and cut eight eight inch sections. Using a rod nailer, I secured these together, creating a square. But if you don't have access to this tool, you can always use a screw. Next, decide how long you want your light to be. We chose to use a one by two by 30 inch board. After sanding, find the middle of the board and mark off five points. We spaced ours five inches apart. Using a paddle bit, drill through the center of the board. After finding the center on the side piece and the length board, line them up and then secure. Once everything is square, measure your final four boards to make a hollow rectangle. Cut and secure these as you did the side squares. Finally, attach two eye hooks to either side to use for hanging. After my eye hooks were secure, I attached three feet of black chain link to each side of my chandelier. You can leave this raw wood and coat with a polyurethane to protect it from the outdoors, but I chose to use a satin black spray paint. Once my spray paint was dry, it was time to secure my solar lights. This took a little force, but warming up the plastic in the sun can make the tube more pliable. I chose to cut down my tubes, but this is of course personal preference. I have a pergola out back where I hung my new chandelier from two screw hooks. I absolutely love the new ambiance it creates, not only at nighttime, but it also adds a designer touch to my outdoor space. Take two styrofoam blocks and glue them together. Take that wire hanger and bend it. Take two pipe cleaners and twist the ends together, wrapping the pipe cleaners up and around the hook. Start to stick the faux stems into the top and sides. Now take some faux flowers and stick them into the center face and hang your new flower arrangement we're going to start with this container and we're going to simply just cut our brick in half. Now we can take our bricks of floral foam and wedge them inside. Up next we have some of these ferns and simply wedge them right in the middle, fluffing them out, adjusting them. I'm just going to take our stems and work them into the foam. Now we have this really pretty eucalyptus. We'll just poke them right in. And here is how our arrangement turned out. I absolutely love it. 
clean the glass thoroughly. So I'm gonna just tape off the top of this glass and then I'm gonna just cover most of this with a thin layer of the clear resin and just make sure you don't really miss any spots. I'm gonna go ahead and place some flowers now that's all of my flowers there. I'm gonna just take a toothpick and just carefully make sure they are pressed down and that'll just seal these flowers in fully. All right, here's our wine glass all complete. I've gone ahead and collected a whole bunch of these fun pom-poms and put a little dab of glue in there. At the end of the wire right into the middle of the pom-pom. Got a bunch made here. And then I'm gonna start bringing my sunflowers right around the tree. It's time to add those super fun pom-poms that we made at the beginning. Let's make a little bow for the top. We wrap it around the top of the tree like this. It's a great way to use your tree at a different time of year. I've pre-soaked one brick of fresh floral foam. We're gonna just take that and wedge it in. Now begins the fun part, and that is going to be carving your foam into kind of a conical or triangular shape. Right here, we have some mini carnations. So I'm just gonna snip off the top and start placing them. So the biggest ones are sticking out the furthest. And then as we kind of approach the top, we are gradually getting smaller so that we kind of create that conical topiary shape. So to create the very peak of our topiary, we're gonna take a carnation, place it sticking straight out, and then we can begin filling in. So I placed a few more pieces to fill in any of the holes where you still see the foam. You created the perfect centerpiece or arrangement for virtually anywhere you would like. And you can absolutely customize it to create whatever shape you're looking for. Today I have been foraging in my garden. I'm just going to attach them lightly into place with this sticky tape. Just keep going all the way around cut off these extra bits on the bottom. Pull it quite tight, put some glue stick on the glass and secure it in place. Rolling it all the way around. I'm just gonna smear some of the glue here, push the paper over. Put glue on the rim, cut some of these top bits off and just see how pretty these are. I grabbed two hanging baskets and liners from Dollar Tree for this epic garden project. I unclipped the chains off of one of the baskets and placed the liners in each basket. Next, I used sharp scissors to cut a slit in the middle of each section and in the center hole at the bottom. Then I grabbed some petunias from my local garden center and carefully placed them into each hole. Planting from the outside worked best for me. I set it aside and repeated the same steps for the second basket. Next, I filled the center of each basket with potting soil and watered it. I gently placed one basket on top of the other and secured them together using four black zip ties. At that point, I decided to add in a few more flowers on the edge where the baskets meet. Can you believe this is what mine looked like after three weeks? Take a sealable plastic container and fill the bottom with clay unscented cat litter. Add salt to the top. Pour more cat litter onto the top. Mix the salt and cat litter together. Cut the stems on all of your flowers. Place the flowers into the litter, add salt to the top, put the lid on and let it sit for about five days. Brush the salt off of your flowers. Mix up some resin. Slowly pour your resin into the mold. Place your flowers slowly into the poured resin. Pour your next layer of resin slowly on top of this. Remove it from the mold. Keepsakes to put more flower vases onto and use it as a centerpiece.
set an edge of your lampshade against one edge of the wallpaper. Measure in one half inch to one inch and mark it by running a pencil where the shade meets the paper. Spray the outside of the lampshade with spray adhesive. Roll the lampshade onto the wallpaper, pressing and smoothing as you go. Apply double-sided tape to the inside lip of the top and bottom of the lampshade. Wrap the overage border of the wallpaper over the edge of the shade and press onto the double stick tape. Take some more tape and apply it to the top and bottom of the lampshade. Take some ribbon in a coordinating color and press half of the width onto the double stick tape and secure on the inside of the shade. Do this for the top and bottom of the shade. Continue the lamp makeover by spray painting the base of your lamp. I hope this inspired you to give a tired and worn out lampshade a stylish makeover. So to get started, I am going to take apart the lamp and I'm just gonna put some alcohol on the paper towel and wipe down my lamp base. I'm just giving a little light base coat to this. And then I have some all-in-one pre-mix stucco patch. And I'm just using an old chip brush and I'm just gonna coat the entire thing. While that's drying, I'm gonna take that really kind of dingy old looking lampshade. I'm using some white chalk paint. Oh, that's water that you saw me mist on there. And it just makes the paint kind of flow and cover nicely. I'm gonna let that dry. And then I'm actually gonna do a second coat. I have a medium gray paint here and I've also added a little water to it. I'm just gonna take a regular paintbrush. So I'm just gonna work on getting this whole lamp base covered in this. While that gray is still wet, I'm grabbing some mud by Dixie Belle. I put a glove on to put this part on. It's a lot like spackle. Let that dry for about an hour and then grab a sanding block and get that all sanded smooth down. And then for even more dimension, I have white chalk paint and then a lighter gray. Little sea sponge here that I'm just getting kind of damp and I've also misted my paint plate. Now I'm just gonna kind of dab around and keep working on this faux finish. And then after I do all that, now I have black and brown paint. Okay, so I'm watering down that paint a little bit. And a push pin, I'm using the tip, the little pin to add some little dot. Lastly, just to seal in all this, I used a matte clear spray. And I am really, really, really happy with how this came out. It was really fun to do too. Grab some hot glue and put a bead of glue along one side of your lampshade and then add some twine or jute. And we're gonna wrap that around the lampshade until we cover the entire thing. After you have all your tassels made, we are gonna add these to the bottom of our lampshade. And I decided to hot glue these. You could use a needle and thread and tie them and sew them on the edge, but this worked out perfect. You are going to simply trim off the excess tails. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that this is from a Walmart lampshade. Literally looks like I got it from Anthropology. Picked up this thrifted lampshade that I got at my local thrift store. These embellishments that I found at my local fabric store. I began placing my lace appliques over the lampshade. I'm next gonna bring in some spray adhesive and I'm just gonna spray the back of the lace applique and then I'm gonna lay it in place on my lampshade. Once my pieces were fully placed on, I came in with this So Soft fabric paint. Just went very lightly over some of the edge detailing. I'm so happy with how this DIY turned out. It came together better than I could have ever imagined. I found this basket for a few dollars, so I'm going to use this round drill bit to add the lamp. I just need to thread the cord through the hole. Now that I have my pieces cut, I need to join the two together and use a piece of fusing tape and then hold my hot iron on it and I can slip the cord right through the middle. I love how pretty this basket looks as a lamp and how easy it was to cover the dark cord. We are going to start with seven of these bowls. You're also going to need some E6000. Just basically go around. You're going to place it on top. We're going to do this again. So I'm going to give these a little bit of time to cure. I'm going to be taking my E6000. And I'm going to go around the top of this, stack it on top, and we're going to do this one more time. I'm using Dixie Belle Vintage Duck Egg Chalk Paint. So I'm actually gonna use E6000 for this step. Line it up. And then we're gonna let that sit until it dries. And we are gonna trace around the inside of the, of the hole that I created. You actually will not need to paint the underside, just the sides and the top. I'm gonna start with the bottom part, tilt that up. So we are going to take a solar light, placing it over, put the top part of our solar light 
and it's gonna nestle right in. Here is my finished DIY cordless solar lamp for my outdoor patio. I bought a set of bamboo plates, these LED bulb lights. I'm using two different types of spray paint, and then I'm gonna go over the top with a little bit of gold, unscrew this piece, and turn the light on. I'm going to use some double-sided adhesive mounting strips. Then I'm just gonna stick the light bulb to the center of the plate. Picture hanging strips. So I'm just gonna apply one big one to the back and hang it up on my wall. That's it. This was a really easy project to make these gorgeous light fixtures. Run to Dollar Tree and pick up one large plastic bowl. Use a palette knife and drywall spackle to apply to the exterior of the bowl. Create a hole in the bottom of the bowl in the size of a light socket. Finish spackling around the hole. Add Dixie Bell's Slick and Stick to the inside of the bowl with a paintbrush. Take Modern Masters metallic gold paint, at least two layers. Sand the surface of the spackled exterior. Take Rub and Buff and buff into the surface of the bowl interior. Take a hanging light kit from Amazon. Add a light bulb of choice. Hang in place and plug in. Create your own modern pendant light for less than $15.